So kind of excited, you know, it's finally spring. I'm feeling good about it, but um, it's gonna sound silly, right? I want you to go get something at a camp. Interesting, right? So welcome to the world of the Loviberry. Now, the Loviberry is, uh, you know, it's used traditionally in Chinese and uh, Thai cooking. And it's like really quite lovely, but what it's really also used for is in medicine, in traditional medicine. And they call it sort of a secondary name, we're all the dragon vine. And what it, it looks like a lot like a lychee, right? You're like, oh, I see this before. It's a lychee, it's a lychee, 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 tomato, tomato, whatever. But uh, normally it has like a black um, pit in there, like a little bit of fruit. So it does look like an eyeball, which is kind of a little disturbing, but I kind of love it in the same sense. But what's amazing about this fruit is that it is not like the lychee. It's not perfumey and sweet, which I totally love. This is its own fruit. And really when it's light, it's um, like, you know, a little bit musky and tart. And it kind of eats much, you know, like a, like a water chestnut. But how we use it in cocktails is muddling it. Uh, and then you're going to just use that flavor profile that comes from it. And it pairs really, really lovely with our friend, the lime. Now, lime season is now. You're in your grocery store and you see that lime over center five for a dollar. Oh my gosh, good flying season. So these two little guys together, delish. Um, you can use it in cocktails like that, cooking. Um, also using the little variants of tea is quite lovely. Um, you can eat it for a snack. They are super good for you, good for your vocal cords, throat, um, all that kind of stuff. And you know, if you're a singer or play an instrument, you know, it might be something you want to be interested in. Get interested in or get into or put it in your mouth. So cheers. Thank you.